like three or four weeks ago, I promised you a flat video and then, and then life and the build and all of these big decisions got in the way, but we'll talk more about those later. For now, here's your damn flat video. Now we're going to move on to the electric flaps and that includes some flat motors, some flap covers and some linkage uh, to get the movement of the flaps from the center of the plane out towards the outboard edges of the fuselage and thus the wing. Let's see what's first. After opening these holes up to quarter inch, the second thing we need to do is add a tiny little hole in this thing for safety wire. And I've never really done anything like this before, but it's a little intimidating because we have to drill a hole just through the corner of this thing, sort of on a bias, uh, so that I can loop safety wire through it. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, giving myself a little divot with a burr. Uh, hopefully to catch that drill bit when I go in to go in diagonally or else I feel like that drill bit is just going to skid right off the edge. safety wires in. We've pierced it. Next up, drilling some holes and cutting some pieces off of our bearing block, the center bearing block for the flap. So I thought I was being all smart and it was like, I'm going to have to fit the weldment before I fit the second bracket, uh, but I should be able to sneak it in. I won't have to do this twice. Nope. Turns out I got to do it twice. It's such a tight fit in here um, that I actually have to sneak it in with both the bearing blocks because I can't get an angle at it to slide it into one bearing block ahead of time. All right, I've got the ends loosened back up and pulled out so that I can get some room in there to get some nut plates in for this center block, which has been adjusted to now fit. Uh, the holes have been match drilled for the bolts. Uh, now I'm just putting in nut plates for those bolts. I have heard about a couple people using uh, just nuts and washers on the end. Uh, I guess I could do that. I don't know. I feel like it's cheating. So I'm gonna use the nut plates that the plan calls out for. Um, let's get to it. All right, the nut plates are in and I think it's finally time to get everything uh, bolted back together. So here we go.
don't know if you can hear that. It's like 14 degrees out with 40 mile an hour winds. Which I'm sure some of you will say like, yeah, that's, you know, every Saturday. But around here, it's a little chilly and stormy. here all in various stages of completion uh, none of them too difficult um, but I think the only thing left is to match drill in order to match drill we're gonna start to assemble all this stuff so let's take a look at what that looks like I'm trying to just make sure everything fits before I go all drilly nilly on this thing. I got some various bits. I'm gonna fit it in there. Normally that would seem a little premature, um, but 
I in fact have to get it fit in there in order to match drill one of the brackets. Uh, and we gotta do that before we can prime and put this whole thing together. So let's go give it a try. Uh, this hole here has been noticeably widened and that is so this bolt will actually fit in there so it doesn't uh, protrude as much, I believe, from the side here. Heads up, that washer should be over there. I just discovered a small error, and that is I went ahead and made this flush when I fit this bottom bracket, but it is indeed supposed to have an eighth of an inch. It's supposed to sit an eighth of an inch proud on the bottom here. And that means that everything up top is now a little too low by an eighth of an inch. And it seems like I should be okay. The difficulty will be fitting the nut plates on here, uh, which were already pretty tight to the top. Um, and if I have it like the plans say, it's gonna be hanging over, but I think I can actually just squeeze them in a little bit less of an angle and I should be able to get it to fit. If I can't, I'll order a new one um, but I'm going to try to press forward with it as it is. I haven't had to order a part in a while, so I'm not actually going to be that bummed out if I wind up having to order this part. The primer for uh, all of this isn't even going to get here for another week yet, so eh, not that big of a deal. few last things to match drill and then I can take it all apart. goes down at the base of this flap mechanism to get the center tunnel cover uh, mocked up in place. Now this is the piece I made previously 
whose top was a bit too long towards the aft end. That is allowing me to see how it fits, and indeed it needs to be trimmed, but I actually like how this is working out because I think I can make a pretty snug fit out of the whole thing. I'm not totally sold on where the finish is at down there, but I'll keep fiddling with it. Um, and, and I always have plan B, which is just remake another one. Um, for now, however, I'm gonna leave it and we're gonna turn our attention back to this flat mechanism. I just have a few holes left to match drill. I can pull all this out and start to uh, prep for nut plates and then set it aside. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta be a big boy and put the toys back in the toy box. It's really easy to get going on a roll and just keep working and then look around and realize the mess you've created. From here I just gotta break this down and prep it for nut plates wherever they're gonna be necessary. Shouldn't be too difficult. I think most of these are the standard nut plates that we've been using, but I think also there are a couple that might be a curveball. I wanna make sure I don't mess that up. Backrest brace is the piece that I accidentally set about an eighth of an inch too low. And as a result, these holes here are a little too high. Now I'm not worried about the holes themselves, they'll be fine. But on the flip side, it doesn't allow me to set these nut plates at the approximate 45 degree angle that the instructions recommend. Why do they recommend that? Well, it keeps one of the eyelets or one of the rivets here a little bit a ways away from this wall. 
if I move that to where it needs to go, I'm getting really close to the wall here, which means it's gonna be really, really difficult to dimple. Well, we're not countersink like you did the other parts just now. I can't because this is actually fabricated from 0.025 and it's simply not thick enough. I will also note that I'm not overly concerned about edge distance on nut plate rivets. Uh, they're really there more for alignment and just to hold the nut plate on. It works. It's, it's not my, my best work, it's not my proudest work, but it worked. Uh, I think it'll be fine and you'll never be able to see it, that's the best part, except for I just showed it to you. Other than that part, you'll never be able to see it. If you're wondering what that little orange bubble looking thing is, it's a tiny little space heater. I think from probably Timu or Alibaba or some less than reputable online source. You know how I love my cheap things. Anyways, that winter storm is still raging and it's made working in the garage a little less than hospitable. And so I'm trying to combat that with this space heater. If you read somewhere in the paper about a dude building an airplane and he went up and smoked in his garage, I think we all know why. Anyways, it's also made editing video a little less than fun, hence my blanket fort in the garage. I've been doing a massive amount of priming. Um, I received a new can of my white primer. As I mentioned before, I think I messed up the chemistry of the old stuff by pouring off a can that wasn't fully mixed. And those suspicions were confirmed with this new can. Uh, the paint's flowing nicely. Uh, if, I, if I put enough on, I get a nice gloss finish. Um, I'm still battling that line between uh, a nice light coat, but enough to get a, a really good covered coat that doesn't leave any of the blueness of the metal and, and will allow it to gloss out. Um, that said, I think it's working fine for what we're doing here. Uh, and I'm really happy with the priming setup in general. In fact, the only thing lacking in that priming booth now is a paint technician uh, who has some skill and knows what he's doing. Um, that and a little bit of elbow room. So now we've got a bunch of pieces primed. I've gone around the aircraft. I've put in some nut plates that we've removed and some that have needed to be added. At this point, the flaps are next. Uh, so I'm gonna get those installed, even though I might have to take them out later. And we'll get into that in a second.
flap system is almost entirely installed with screws and this is good because as I alluded to it might have to come out in fact nearly all of it's gonna have to come out just for wiring but why might the rest of it have to come out the RB7 is set up with uh, just a simple toggle switch for flaps and you count in order to deploy or retract your flaps a count to three for example might equate to 10 degrees of flaps I have very little faith in my ability to both count and fly at the same time uh, I think most people would prefer a flap system with a switch that will automatically deploy uh, 5, 10, 15 degrees of flaps or similar. Uh, and, and you can do that, but you're going to need a sensor that will feed that system back information about how far the flaps are deployed. Currently, the RB7 does not come with such a sensor, but you can get one from vans and other places, and I plan to install just that in this plane. And in order to do that, a lot of this is going to have to come out. So there it is, the freaking flap episode. Straight from my sick ass blanket fort to you. Uh, if you're not subscribed, you're going to want to be. Because coming up next, I'm going to provide some details on where the build is going from here. Some exciting stuff, as I alluded to. And if you haven't liked this episode yet, shame on you. We'll see you next time on Ryan Flies.